Most farmers are forced to painstakingly traverse the country searching for good cows that can enable them reap the maximum benefits from their investments. However, before you embark on such a trip, you need to ask yourself several questions. Among them, what is the best dairy cow? How does a dairy cow feed? How much milk should you get from the best dairy breed if well managed? The answers to these queries depend on the breed of the animal, the management and its feeding schedules. Coming up on Seeds of Gold. One of the motto of a dairy farm in the whole world is a calf per cow per year. You need to have every cow give you a calf. Emmanuel Sabimana is a dairy farmer located in Kakiri Sub County, Wakiso District. He has been operating Wagaba Mixed Farm for close to 10 years. An electrical engineer by profession and a dairy farmer by training, Emma has seen his farm grow from producing just a few liters of milk to full production capacity of over 10,000 liters of milk on a daily. He has done this through taking more research and training opportunities from other farmers around the globe. It has been a long journey. A journey that by the time I started, I had a lot of limited information. Because looking at the numbers we started with then, today we should be at over 300 cows. If I knew the information that I know now, which I acquired like two years ago. That was in 2017, July, when I attended the large herd management course in Madison, Wisconsin, where we began having a new trend of doing things after getting enough information. I was learning how to develop the herd at a fast speed. For you to develop the herd at a fast speed, you need to have, first of all, healthy cows. The second is through good feeding, and the third is through cleanliness. Basically, we don't have a doctor on the farm because we are trying as much as possible to have limited treatment. We are the only ones in Uganda who submit our milking cows twice a week to somatic cell counting because we believe in offering a high quality product in the market. What pushed me into the food sector is one of the compulsory sectors that don't know whether you are rich or poor. When the time of food comes, everybody has to assemble. And I saw it as there was a very big gap. At one time, in one of my part-time activities, I used to have a delivery truck that was picking milk from Ulshere. We were selling 4,000 liters of milk every day. Those were 80 cans, and one day I decided to take up the position of the driver. He had lost a sister and I had to sit in for him. So the typical day began at 3 o'clock. I took the truck for washing and I began picking the cans. By the time I finished fueling, when we were leaving Kampala, we left at 9 p.m. We reached Leantonde at around midnight. Then we slept. I think it was just a short break. Within four hours, or less than three hours, I was back on the steering, going to deliver the cans on each of the small farms in Kazo and Rushere areas. And that opened my eyes that if I put up a farm just in the backyard of Kampala, because we are just around 35 kilometers from the city center, that means less than an hour we can be at the city center, which is the main market of Uganda where the whole economy is operating from. For dairy, the genetic composition of a breed is of utmost importance. Knowing the breed characteristics will help you decide if a certain breed will meet the farmer's expected milk production rates. The most often seen dairy cow breeds are the American Holstein, the Jersey, Ashire, and Brown Swiss. Uh, the kind of breed we are having here is the American, American Holstein Frisian. The average weight on this farm here of the cows is around 700 to 800 kilos. We have cows with huge frame and why I chose the big cows is because the rate of growth is fast. So the time it takes for me to have a heifer is around 24 months when it is already going to give birth. 
So the reason why we targeted the big cows is the, the rate of growth is faster, the efficiency and the food conversion is higher. So we chose the American Holstein Frisian just because of that. Breeding is done using two different methods and these are use of artificial insemination and the natural mating method. The main advantage of artificial insemination is that it increases the usefulness of superior sire to an extraordinary degree. It helps to regulate the breeding program and the space between successive calvings without unnecessarily prolonging the dry period. The services of superior sires are greatly extended. By natural services, a bull can breed 50 to 60 cows per year. On the other hand, the artificial insemination technique, thousands of cows can be sired in one year by one bull. With the use of the artificial insemination breeding system, Wagava Farm holds a total hard count of 110 heads of cattle, hence the high milk production rate on the farm. One of the motto of a dairy farm in the whole world is a calf per cow per year. You need to have every cow give you a calf. To an extent that every time you have an empty cow on the farm, it costs you not less than 30,000 shillings per day. So you need to have the cow as soon as possible bred. So in the breeding, we have to have first have what they call the voluntary waiting period, usually between 57 to 60 days maximum. After that, we have to make sure that she conceives. On the part of the bull, we have eliminated the bull and also the people. So we are doing what they call, we are running what they call protocols. We determine the time and when the cow is going to be ready for insemination. Then we only use sex semen to this on the number of bulls that are born. This, this one began in uh, September 2000, September 2017, after the training in the United States. And since then, we have had a total of around like 50 heifers born. And right now, we have around 30 pregnancies, as compared to the first method where we are using conventional semen, and we are growing at a very, sm very, very slow rate. And besides that, we are not very sure of the genetics we are using. So on this farm, we are mainly using two types of uh, semen companies. We target bulls with a total performance index that is not less than 2,400. Currently, the world champion is at 3,000 uh, TPI. The best bull we are using on the farm right now is the TPI of 2,800. And that is the Tabasco. And as you are going to see the kind of calves that are coming out of this breeding program. Experienced farmers are comparing a dairy cow to a factory. That means what is fed to the cow determines to a large extent the quality and quantity of milk produced. For a healthy and productive cow, feed ratios should have a balance of quality, quantity, amounts of concentrates, proteins, minerals and vitamins. Uh, basically, these animals have different feeding protocols because their needs are different. The way you feed a pregnant cow is not the way you feed a milking cow. The way you feed the one which is going, is not the way you feed the, the calves. The calves are fed different. We have almost like five feeding protocols. So the, the feed is determined just by the requirement. For example, the calves, you must give it broken maize with cotton. They need a coarse meal. Only 4.5 liters of milk per day is required. Reasons you need the rumen to develop, what some people call the chitauro. The faster it develops, the higher the efficiency. The first six months of the yearlings have to be fed with a lot of protein. Proteins are bodybuilding feeds. Then when you go to the dry cows, you don't need them to be very fat. You will have issues of delivery. When you go to the, the milking ones, they are losing a lot of calcium. The diet has to change. They are using a lot of energy. So the diets vary depending on the stage of development. If you do your research, you'll find that 80% of the costs on the farms is feed. Basically, if you are to run a farm, you need to be the best person to employ on a farm is a nutritionist. Because all the raw materials that we use have different quantities, percentages of nutrients. So there is no one particular food that you're going to give to the cow. All you need to know 
is the requirement and play about with the equation. For example, at one time you may be feeding maize. When the maize becomes very expensive, then you can switch on to something which may not be having all the nutrients that the maize gives in the same percentage. So you have to see how you keep on playing about. So, the feeding is very important because you have to know, do the costing part by keeping on choosing which ones are the best sources of food, which ones are the cheap ones, and how do we apply the various cheap foods to give us what the cow requires. So you may find at one time you have to feed more of a certain particular one to give you the same quantity. But nonetheless, there are other ways of cutting the cost. For example, we, we, are, we are now shifting from growing a lot of silage to growing a lot of perennials. We have a shamba of alfalfa lucene. You grow it once for the next five years. You're harvesting every three weeks. Every three weeks you're chopping. Instead of growing maize, whereby you have to plant every season, weed every season, and wait for every six, every six months before the maize is ready to be processed to silage. So we're looking for other cheaper options like growing perennials. We are shifting our target, not eliminating the maize silage, but we are now growing other crops that are perennials like alfalfa lucene, uh, alfalfa, alfalfa, alfalfa lucene, and then the caliandra. We have gardens of caliandra, then we have the boma roads, which is 12 kilometers away. These are crops that you harvest like every month as compared to the maize which you harvest once in every three months and wait for three months for it to be converted to silage. For a farmer to identify a good dairy cow, some of these characteristics must be present. Well-balanced fore and hide part of the body and udder that is above the hock. Prominent and well-developed milk on the udder and belly. Wedge-shaped body from top and side view. Uh, a good dairy cow should have like a box wedge, uh, like a box shape at the back. At the, when, you should, when you stand at the back of the cow, you should be able to see four bones. There are four bones. If you ever go to look for a direct cow and you find that it has a flesh uh, behind, then that's a, a beef, beef qualities. You won't get the dairy aspect out of it. Then good direct cows have the, the udder is above the knee. It's like a pot. That means that cow is going to have less cases of mastitis. So the good direct cow is not the one with the big udder that touches the ground. We have some very good dairy breeds here. The other is up. They're milking over 40 liters as first time heifers. We have the records, we can show them to you. So the genetics, we are up on the game. A good dairy cow will have a capacity of producing over 1,000 liters of milk per month. All a farmer needs to do is follow the required specifications, which are milkers should be of a good dairy breed. Good management on farm should be a non-negotiable factor. This will involve proper disease control through spraying and deworming, and a well-balanced, good feeding and resting schedule. The routine on this farm begins at 5 o'clock. It begins with some feeding. The reason why we feed every time before milking, like right now we are feeding them, so when they go for the milking, they are comfortable and less stressed. So we fed them around 11 o'clock. And for a cow to give you milk, just as you will see them, a cow needs to rest for 12 to 14 hours in a day. That means every interval after eating, because we've divided the day into eight hours. We milk at six, we milk at two, and we milk at 10. So in between those gaps, we need four hours of rest. A cow only makes milk when it is resting. Because a cow has four stomachs. As, they, as what they have just done right now, 
they have sent the sto food to the first stomach, what they call the rumen. When they sit down, they pull the food from the rumen into the other stomachs and begin processing them into food. So if you don't give it the time to rest and pull the food, the food is not going to give you the milk is going to be useful. So you need the cow to eat, rest, and begin making the milk. As soon as the cows leave the parlor, the teeth have the opening widened because of the process of milk. Now we need that teeth to close to avoid mastitis and bacteria from going in the environmental bacteria. So the cows, after milking, they go back to eat. In the process that they are eating, the natural process is taking place as they are closing. By the time they go to rest, it's already closed. Those are some of the management tricks that we run here. With such a strict yet productive schedule, Eman Sabimana is able to produce over 10,000 liters of milk in just days. And because of this high production, he has taken on the route of adding value to his high quality milk. Seated on 110 acres, Wagaba Farm now holds a milk and yogurt processing plant. Its proprietor has taken on this route to cater for the high production rate on the farm as well as meet the missing gaps in the dairy production market. Uh, on this farm, we, run a, we have a factory which we shall visit later. We are making yogurt and we are making milk, pasteurized milk. And our shelf life tends to be a little bit longer than others because of the initial bacterial load is low. When you realize the milking we are doing here is machine milk. The milk comes from the cow, you don't touch it, to the cooler straight away. That means the initial bacterial load is very low. And what kills milk is the bacterial load. So that means if you begin have a low initial bacterial load, that means the shelf life of the milk is going to be slightly longer. Even the taste of the milk is going to be different. Value addition, is the way to go because you get more money for for the product you're putting and that's the only thing which is going to catapult you to great heights because when you jump off the value addition chain that means someone is taking it on your behalf yet you are the foundation welcome to wagaba mixed farm factory where we talked about value addition as the new way to go so that we can sustain ourselves as long as possible and give the, the customers a better product so we begin outside here this is a milk reception area we have a, a milk tank where the milk is poured. We have a pump that sucks it in, and after that it is cleaned. So we can have a guided factory tour, the various sections. This is the, the cold room. I mean, the, this is the milk, milk when, when the milk is received, it is stored in the, in the milk tanks. The capacity is 5,000 and 1,000 or 6,000 liters we can receive. This is the reverse osmosis uh, for water treatment. Because in milk you need very clean water, so reverse osmosis, and then uh, UV treated. So this is the section where the milk is received and where water is prepared from. And then we have the, the showers, where all workers, when they come in, they leave all their clothes there, they shower, then they dress up with the ready to work, then we can proceed here. This is the CIP tank for CIP uh, cleaning. CIP means cleaning in place. So we have a section for, for the acid, and then for the sodium hydroxide, and then the water for the rinsing. And this is the main production room. In the production, this facility was basically built for yogurt. It's a mainly yogurt plant with a capacity of 6,000 liters of yogurt per day. And then the milk, pasteurized milk, is just like a, an additional. So we have the, we do mainly eat yogurt. So this first step here is for mixing the, the, the yogurt formulation. And then the milk to make it thick. There are two ways of making eat yogurt. You either boil off the water or you add modified starch with powdered milk to make it thick. After that, this is a mixing tank. From the mixing tank, we go to the, the preheating tank where you have to raise the temperature. That is called the hydration tank to allow the solids to dissolve. Then we have the pasteurizer, the homogenizer. Then in here we have the, the yogurt tanks. We have the yogurt tanks here. After the milk has been pasteurized and homogenized, we bring it to the yogurt tanks. This is of 1,500, 500, and 300. Every five hours you have yogurt 
being manufactured. So all the yogurt comes here before it is packed. This is a packing machine where you put the, the yogurt in the cups. This is also a cup packing machine. The other one is the bottling machine. We are glad to be the pioneers in packing milk in the bottle. So this is the sleeving area where we do the sleeving of the milk. And then this is the cold room. Where you can see the milk which has been produced. As milk has a high demand right from our own homes, market for high quality processed milk should not be a problem. Some of the products at Emma's include yogurt. However, there are much more products a farmer could choose to venture into value addition such as cheese, butter, ice cream, casein and powdered milk too. The milk, the recommended retail price for this milk is supposed to be 3,000 shillings. It's what we recommend. But unfortunately, sometimes the, the the retailers want to earn much more than we, than we are pushing and they want to maximize a lot of profits. To come this far, it requires an experience of hard work and resilience. Eman Sabimana knows that very well and lives with a statement of encouragement to anyone, especially the youngsters, that are looking to go into dairy farming. The first thing that I would advise most Ugandan farmers is the search for information and knowledge. Because the kind, the strength of the decision that you take is directly proportional to the amount of information that you hold at the time of decision making. If you hold little information at decision making time, you like it cause blunders. But if you hold enough information, then your decisions you're going to take are going to be very strong, unchallengeable, and they will stand the test of time. So I would advise whoever is going to begin this business, you have to first look for enough information. There's a lot of ways you can look for the information. You can do farm visits like us. You can go to international exhibitions, like I've been attending the, most of the international exhibitions. I've attended the World Dairy Expo in Madison, Wisconsin in 2015, I was there. And I have also visited a number of farms. And then of course, not forgetting that I can say that most of the problems on this farm have been eliminated through reading and research on the internet. It's basically what I've who been reading, invest in knowledge and information as much as they can. Because the only thing that is going to make them have a turnaround, without enough information, there's nowhere they're going.